So let's pray and we're going to get uh, 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 All right. So let's pray. So Father, just thank you so much for this day. It is a day to glorify you because we're still alive and breathing and you've given us mission and ministry and family and blessing we have houses to live in i just think about all the people lord right now in in storm ravaged areas that don't have a home that, that don't have water or food uh regularly that they can prepare for themselves we're so blessed lord uh i thank you that you have given us this opportunity to spend this morning studying the word and lord i just ask you to help us to treasure what you teach us so that we would be able to be like this church that we're going to talk about, to have a heart attitude that is uh, open and willing to serve. And I just thank you, Father. Thank you so much for how you move and, and teach us and grow us through your word and through the ministries that you lay before us. I just praise you, Father, and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All righty, so... We are now at going from four, chapter four to chapter five. So we're just going to start out and look at um, verse 32 down to 37. Really, uh, actually, uh, 36 and 37 should have been, in my humble opinion, in chapter five. I don't know why it's in chapter four. It breaks the flow of the entire thing to not have that in the same. But that's how it is, and that's how we're going to look at it. So it says, Now the full number of those who believe were of one heart and soul, and no one said, no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. So um what is the condition of the church? What's going on with this church? Okay. The, the first thing that I think is really interesting is it says the full number. All right, guys. Does the full number of people in your church have everything in common? No. 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 <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> right? There's going to be division. And the full number is of one heart and soul. That is amazing. And then it says everything in common. What is he talking about there? What they have there, sure. What is this common? Is that what you're talking about? Yes, it is. Now, it's, I look, I, you know, I went back and I, I know that we know what this means, but what is it that people use this verse for? This, this verse is communism. Communism, yes. So, here's some things that I looked at three Greek words using this word uh, fellowship, partaking socially. And generously. Those are the three uses of the word common. So it's like common fellowship, social partaking, and doing it generously. That's what they're talking about. Here's two things that it just that it that, that is the truth about it. Goods are not evenly distributed. That's communism. We all there's one apple. There's five people, that one apple is going to be cut five ways exactly, we're getting the exact same thing. So it is not evenly distributed. Some people did not need anything. Other people needed a lot, okay? It is voluntary, and it was based on acts of compassion. That's why the words are fellowship, Socially partaking and generously. Those are three different uses of that word koinonia, which mm -hmm. is what it means in common. Fellowship. So it's an amazing verse. And uh, I think that 
it's something that we should all uh, aspire to. If we have something to give, with doing the water thing, you have no idea what an incredible uh, picture that is. But because everything is in common, or they're giving as needed, the result is none needy. There is no one who has need. Now, we have wants, but nobody's going without a hot meal, right? Or fair shoes, or whatever it is that they need. So, uh, should this be the goal of the church today? Absolutely. In what ways would this be the goal? Think about what ways that would be. You're talking about like our missions, that sort of thing. Missions, yeah. I mean, we, we do, we have a, a soup kitchen. Soup kitchen. That we help support. Right. And uh, OCC. Yeah. The shot on toys. Right. And so we have a very um, timely uh, example of it taking place in um, the fire ravage areas is exactly. the churches that are showing exactly. up. The, the churches are helping feed these people. The churches right. are giving them a place to stay. Mm -hmm. The churches mm -hmm. are the ones that have showed up. It's the body of Christ that's going to fit. That's right. So that's the thing. What, what I think the point of all this is, what's important about it is the church should be the refuge of people. That's what we should be. Uh, that's what we're really called to be. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're seeing here. Think about the society of that day. Roman rule, people are mad at the Romans. You know, there's all that they're being dictated to. They've got this, this very harsh government over them. Uh, we've got a very, as, as uh, Ken and I were talking earlier, this, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, which we'll be getting into that later, the, these rules and regulations. We saw the picture of the lame man, how they were so, just ignoring the guy. This is the this is the synagogue and the religious leaders ignoring a lame person every day for 40 years. Okay. And then you have this group right here of everything in common, full number of them, one heart and one soul, mission oriented. Something else that I really believe in over the years that I've been involved in leadership in churches and ministry is that I was once told by somebody that well, we all need to make sure that we're all getting along before we go out and, and serve the community. And I looked at her and I said, well, that's going to be a waste. I said, you find out what you can do when you get out there and find out what the strengths and weaknesses of the people are. we got to get in there and find out who's really good at, you know, you don't want me in the kitchen. I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I, I'm we'll just oh, yeah. <laughs> but I'm, but that's what I'm saying is that we, you know, we can't all sit around kumbaya and like, oh, it's, it's great, whatever. But if we're not serving and not coming together, then we don't know the strengths or weaknesses of our own body, and we were not going to find that out any other way. No yeah. survey is going to fix that, right? I heard a, a, a lot this long time ago, some study, or I was listening to someone. And it was a pastor who from the pulpit and he said, uh, it's something that we don't have. The problem is not that they can't get it done. The problem, and he was blaming it. He said, it's the churches. The churches are not doing their part. Right. We wouldn't have near the welfare issues or all those kinds of things. If uh, the government things are being freely given to everybody, we wouldn't have those problems if the church did their part. Right. And I don't know, that's just sort of resonating with you know, over the years. That yeah, what, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? I mean, I, I, I just think thing about that. Being a church secretary for three years, you know, people would come with their hands in. Absolutely. But a lot of times it would be the same person right. every two weeks, right. like we were part of their income. <clears throat> right. 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 
So where do you draw the line? There, there, are, there, is, there are problems. There are always going to be problems. Yeah. The question that I would ask, and, and I, I actually had this discussion with my pastor, the question that I ask is, what side of that line do you want to fall on? Yeah. yeah. And so I would rather be taken advantage of, by because that person's going to answer to the Lord, that's not me. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they, if they, yeah, I mean, if they come in there and they're manipulating. Now, if I know, obviously, I deal with this every day in the prison. People okay. that come to me and they tell me, like, oh, my God, I so, so, yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay. You know, you're playing a game. But when somebody comes in and they're doing that, uh, uh, it is, I think it's important to say, well, where are you with the Lord right now? You know, and 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 maybe after a while say, if I see you in the congregation and I know that you're really committed to changing, then you know, maybe we can talk about continuing this. But um, we're not your bank account. Right. We don't want you to starve. Let me give you a list of social services. Yeah. I mean, I'd have that stuff ready to go and say, why don't you go to all over there? That church office. Yeah. And a list of places to go to get yeah. now. You do, and you do to please come to church or church. Right. And the thing is, is that I would just say, we don't mind helping you, but uh, we're going to help our body also. And we're taking money from people within our body who are dedicated. He said that too. That's yeah. weird. I know people that just make the rounds. They just make the rounds. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. One of our one of these said that our kids have Mars and our and there was kids had the youth group. Um, the discussion came up about giving it up to people on the street. You know? Right. And he had made a comment that he had given somebody something. And he goes, Yeah, but what are you going to do? You know what you're going to use it for? He said, I'm going to go off for the youth group. He said, It's a large house to have yes. four to have the week. Uh -huh. That's right. Have the last. And, I, right. and the Lord will deal with you. <laughs> right. That's the thing. We just have to, we, we just have to recognize that. We're gonna have that, and of course, I, I mean, I I have been I can be pretty direct about stuff with people. I think one reason they kept coming back to our office is because they never left empty handed. They have always they never left empty handed. They yeah. he always gave them something. So they gave them. Right. Right. He yeah, really said it. Well, I mean, I'd rather be in his shoes. Yeah, you know, honestly, because God's going to deal with that. Okay, so what's the next thing we see that's going on in verse 33? There are the apostles of the Lord about the resurrection. Mm -hmm. of the Lord Jesus. Grace. The abundant grace is available to all. Okay, they are giving what? They're yes, giving them. Yes. And they're doing it how? With great power. With great power. So, what else are they talking about? Their testimony. This is the apostles' testimony, and they're, and they're also talking about the resurrection. Mm -hmm. And what's the result of all of this? Did it say everybody believed? Great. And grace was great. Oh, it was an open. As you know, you're doing the right thing. How, how, do, how does God communicate with us that we're following as He wants us to do? What do you see in this? Uh, am I doing the right thing? Spirit. Is God working? Yeah, the spirit. There's, there's, there's unity spirit. among the body. They're sharing with each other. They're, the great power of the Holy Spirit is on them. And God is providing all this grace. In a time what of does grace of terminal. What does the word grace mean? We all know it, right? Yeah. Unmerited thing. Right. Right. So I would say there's two things that are true about this. It is making this body more humble. They are humbled by the fact that their little lives, their nobody lives, are impacting people this way. 
That is the grace of God. Great grace. Like God is moving here. And I think that is incredible. I read something that says that the grace of God was active through these maturing believers. That's not, I think I'm maturing more and more. I like to see that that's still happening. Yes, I bet it will still be happening. That it, 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 we will always, we want to always be in that position. Yeah. We're, we're humbly looking at what God is doing. And so then it goes into this next little uh, section. There's not a new person. As, as many were uh, owners of lands or houses, sold them and brought the proceeds and what was sold and really the apostles food. So they were selling property. This is the how one of the how they were helping. They were giving it to the apostles. I'll just say leaders. And the leaders distributed it. So, who did it go to? Who was it distributed to? Those who knew it was the needy. So, uh, we see this really amazing picture of what is happening in this church. Because they are the full number is of one part of the soul. And no one may be because the church became the refuge of that sin. They're growing the church. And, and it's growing like they're getting unbelievers too. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. People are people's lives are changing. Then we have this really interesting little section here. Uh Joseph. He's also called Barnabas. He's a Levite, a native of Cyprus, sold the field, brought the money, and laid at the apostles' feet. So, uh, very interesting uh, that they introduce Barnabas. <laughs> he is a Levite. What does that mean he is? A priest. Yep. He's a Levite. And uh, he's from Cyprus. This information in general will get more interesting as time goes on because he's not from Jerusalem. So he would be considered a Hellenistic Levite priest. Mm -hmm. Because he's not in Jerusalem. And we're going to talk about that when we get to these points and we start looking at Stephen and all the things that are going on in the next couple of chapters. Yes. So, are they quite not supposed to really own anything? Well, he had some land. I don't know. I mean, God's supposed to provide the tribe of Levi, but I have no idea whether they were supposed to own land or not. I actually have never really looked at that. But he did. So, uh, so the interesting that's so amazing is why we talk about the Holy Spirit's work. Why were they able to do all the things that they were doing? You know a little bit about Barnabas from other studies, you know, and he was an encourager. Yeah, which meant he's well, he's talking about all of this, not just Barnabas. We're going to talk about him later. It, it, it required support. Okay, so the Holy Spirit's work is doing yeah. what? What is the Holy Spirit doing? God with them. Okay. Guides and unifies the body. 
I mean, you know, one of the things that help us that we want to look at, and you guys looked at some of this, uh, the ability to be single-minded. And the other thing that I thought was really interesting about this is uh, the disciples of who? Who are they the disciples of? That's right. Single-minded, one leader. Jesus. They're not following a man. The following the Lord. Another example is why we cannot put too much stock in any pastor. He is a man. He's a good leader. God placed him there, but we should all be following Jesus. That's how we say how to trouble. <laughs> so um, they love each other. And we look, I think, on the um, uh, Difficult in John 13, John 15, 1 John. We looked at some verses in there about how we love one another. And the other thing, that's how people know. Now, I had I have to talk about about myself. So I I'm in a lot of different kind of meetings and stuff. And sometimes in ministry people are competing for authority over the ministry. Okay, you know. And so I it is a personal battle of mine when I'm working hard and somebody else walks in and they get all the accolades and I'm sitting there you know, now I have been doing that. And God just said, Are you doing it for them? Or are you doing it for me? <laughs> we all battle mm -hmm. loving each other, especially if we are in ministry and there's a lot going on. And then somebody walks in the door and says, Oh, did you see what so and so did? They were so great. And we're like, Yeah, I've been at it for like 10 minutes and I've uh, been doing 15 years. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Okay. So I understand that, but how do people know our, our, we are genuinely believers? Our love. Okay, and our love is not just being nice. What is it to love one another? Accept their faults. Accept their faults. Help them. Care about them. Mm -hmm. Care about them. Patience. Patience. Yeah, yeah that's all a big piece. piece. All the things that it requires of us. To uh, not to choose not to be critical of something. Okay, sometimes it requires we keep our mouth shut. Yeah, keep our mouth shut. Yeah. Is a yeah. And uh, women, gosh, women can have so much <laughs> uh, You know, I, I and I'm gonna tell you, the Lord just really convicted me. I am the worst of my poor husband. I'm a better driver than my husband. I'm also a red foot, you know, Linda, whatever, you know. That was my way to get there. Uh -huh. So I've had to really learn how to use my cruise control. I'm working at it. I'm doing well. But I am, you know, my husband, if he tries to, he is a holy <laughs> So I have to say, okay, really, what is the point here? Why am I these little internal battles? God is teaching me patience. Patience. Shut <laughs> up. Shut your mouth, Kathy. And I told him that because they were coming up to church. I said, you know what, Lance? I need to just shut up. <laughs> he said nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's like, I would have chosen to do it differently, but so what? I mean, sometimes it doesn't uh -huh. matter. What matters is the result. We got home in one piece and nothing was hit. Uh -huh. Nobody was killed. <laughs> I mean, I feel good about it, okay? <laughs> Talking about love, and I read this thing, um, John 3 16, yes. which is our basis for God so loved the world that he, that he sent Jesus for us. But this author wrote that God's wider love for the world, I wrote it down because it, it, was, it resonated. 
from John 3.16, is not displaced by the concentrated love of Jesus for his friends. Wow. Wow. I thought, wow. <laughs> you know, he loved the world, including me. But Jesus has a concentrated love for his friends, for yeah. his disciples, for me as a believer. And I, I just was, I had never thought of it you know, in that way. It seems more personal. I was writing these letters to talk about Jesus, how he loved them to the end. Yeah, always. To me, it was an amazing picture of that. Uh, <laughs> if you don't, First John 3, 13 through 18, if you don't love the brethren, what is the result? Don't love? And that is abiding in death. Right? If you don't love the brethren, you are by in death. That's from 1 John 3 13 through 18. Hate does not have life. And not only that, hate is murder. One of the reasons why it's really important for us to recognize that if I hate you, I have murdered you in my heart. So that's, that's, uh, that should make us very humble. So, we know love by knowing that is life for us. We lay down our lives for each other. And we love in deep and truth and not in words only. Love is action. Not feelings. I mean, we have the feeling of love, but you know what I'm trying to say. So, what is the next thing that we see? I'm making sure I've got, I've said everything I need to say. Uh, the church, we looked at the word, the church, ecclesia, uh, and I, I wrote down a commentary I thought was really good. Uh, Ecclesia is called out ones. Uh, a gathering of people for a special purpose. Uh, and uh, it's also a picture of Christ's household. Smith's commentary will be in your notes. Before Pentecost, they were individual believers. Now they became his Holy Spirit body animated by his spirit. The church consists of all who belong to the Lord as his disciples are one in love, in character, in hope, in Christ, as the head of all, though it consists of many parts. And that's the description of the church. Yeah. What was the word that you used? Ecclesia. E-K-K-L-E-S-I-A. And it's the Strong's number 1577. So... What's the next thing that's really interesting that they were doing? Where were they meeting? Temples. At the temple. So, that would be pretty awkward, don't you think? I mean, What would happen if, if you think about somebody walked into you? I, I guys, you guys have seen the, uh, uh, I just forgot the name of it, the foundation of the beginning of uh, Calvary Chapel. Uh, it was such a good movie. 
and uh, the master, huh? Maybe? Yeah, it was a movie. I'm, yes. I, I just don't blank on the name of it. Anyway, it's a great movie, and uh, there was a scene where a very traditional, very conservative Baptist church, you know, suit and tie always, and a bunch of hippies. Oh, the, uh, Jesus, oh, uh, the Jesus movement. Jesus movement, or we watched not yeah. 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 We watched this just yeah. a couple of years ago. Right. Yeah. They were very straight lines, very yeah. uh, traditional. And yes, yeah. very traditional. Yeah. And they and they walk in with out shoes on and long hair, yeah. and yeah. playing guitar and all that kind of stuff. And everybody's freaking out. I think that's what the picture is here. Right? <laughs> they're not doing anything the way that they would they're doing it in the temple. They don't they don't understand what's going on here. It's very, very upsetting. And what's happening be, in addition to that is what? Many signs and wonders. This is 12 through 16, chapter 5. I'm going to jump around. Many signs and wonders regularly done among the people by the apostles. Jesus Revolution. Jesus right. Revolution. Mary Thank you. Revolution. Greg Laurie. And yes. Yeah. And so, I mean, if you look at what's happening. 512. Many signs and ones were regularly done. They're in Solomon's portico. And none of the rest dare join them, but the people held them in high esteem. So people are watching it, but they are afraid to join. And more than ever, believers were added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women. They carried the sick onto the streets and laid them on cots and mats. And as Peter came by, that at least his shadow might fall on some of them. And so that they would be healed. The people gathered from towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick, and they were yeah. all healed. That's an amazing picture of the move of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So it is really <laughs> healed. By the disciples. Now, I do believe in healing for today. You don't see much of it, but it does happen. Um, I don't know why that. I I don't I don't have a really huge picture of a, a, an opinion about that, except that that is really something that I wish we could do more. All right. We're talking about them holding them in high esteem. Didn't it have something to do with uh, Ananias and his wife? Because of the fear? Um, We're going to talk about Ananias and Sapphira right now, but I think that what this is talking about is where they are, uh, the, the people that are holding them in high esteem are the ones who are seeing the miracles and things like that happen because uh, now many signs and wonders were regularly done among the people. And you could say that it could go back to Ananias and Sapphira, I guess, but I don't think that that happened in front of the general population. I don't think that would be something that God would do because this is, this is among the believers. And that's, mm -hmm. that's why I wish that chapter four. You know, Barnabas <laughs> comes up and gives his, and then Ananias comes up to give his. I mean, I'm not saying it happened the same day, but I think they were pretty closely associated when they're having the meetings. And so, which is a good segue to what we're going to get. So, um, this is when attacks on the church began, right? We're going to start mm -hmm. talking about, I really want to add that, uh, attacks on the church. So I just add this little if I screwed up your your chart, I'm sorry. Sorry to say attacks. Attacks. C-A-X tax. <laughs> no, they attacks on the church. Yeah, they're gonna have attacks. They sure are. <laughs> they're not gonna be the right kind of attacks. Okay, so this verses one through eleven, I'm just gonna organize it. Are internal. These are internal attacks. 
So, you know, the enemy is coming against them internally. So, you know, um, Ananias and his wife Sapphira sold a piece of property, and with his wife's knowledge, he kept back for himself some of the proceeds and brought only a part of it and laid it up with Paul's feet. What does Peter say? When well, Satan filled her heart, the life of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. For space, I'm just saying for use of the board. I don't know how that I can get that out. So that's a very interesting statement to me. That's what you really think about. Why is that? Why do you think he said it that way? Peter had no way of knowing the cost of the sale only by the Holy Spirit. Right. He knew that. He don't see the Holy Spirit didn't know that he lied, right? About the by the value. But why is that important about Satan? He's a liar. He's a father. Because they are born to Holy Spirit. So I mean, let's let's really think about when I when we get saved. We are identified now with Christ. The Holy Spirit is within us. We have the identity of Christ in us. Now, we may not know the word. We may not know the behavior. But we have a conscience towards the Lord. Right? I want to please. I may not be pleasing him and not know that I'm not pleasing him. So I need to mature in what I'm doing. But that's not what's going on here. Right? Because he's got an example of people that are coming in, distributing, and, and meeting the needs. Right? So um, he's got the value, he's got the money to do it, or he wouldn't be selling the land, okay? I don't know why, he's, why how much it was or how much land, that doesn't really matter. The point is, is that what I mean, Peter said, why has Satan filled your heart to lie? What is that in don't have to down. We don't have to lie. We're filled with the Holy Spirit. Why do we lie? We're not filled with Well, so that we lie. I can lie with the Holy Spirit. In me. to please somebody else or to look for it. We, we really need to think about what it is we're doing. Okay? Because um, if I feel, uh, well, well, if I get upset about somebody getting a uh, accolades for something that Never was ever said to me about. You know, we're doing the same thing, they get the pat on the head, I don't, right? Well, now do I have to behave that way? I don't think we Is that not listening to the flesh? Yeah. And what does Satan do? How does he speak to us? For our flesh. Yeah. He can't speak to us through the spirit. He can't he cannot speak to us through the spirit. The Holy Spirit is supposed to be the director of our hearts. So if I am listening to Satan, he is filling my heart to sin. Because I no longer have to sin. I have to choose to sin versus choose to walk in the Holy Spirit. Isn't that the difference between a saved person and an unsaved person? I mean, I see it all the time. Mm -hmm. I get mad, I, I react, I get beat that girl up, or whatever. <laughs> you know? Because there is no restraint within you. What is the Holy Spirit supposed to be doing with us? Restrains us and directs us and speaks to us. We just had this big list of all of these things of the work of the Holy Spirit within us. Right? Well, well how are they able to be uh, devoted to one each other? One, one another. How do that is God's love rule, which I love that. Hope that you said. How to have Jesus love his own rule in my heart. If we don't love, what are we doing? 
Yes. So, I mean, I'm not one of these PBGB like, you know, you go behind every corner. What the truth is, is that I let my flesh get in control of me sometimes. Yeah. And, and sometimes it seems like a good idea. It is a good idea. <laughs> in the moment when I'm upset, you've done right. I think it's a great idea. <laughs> but then, the sad thing is that it kind of runs it said I sold my property for this to the money, and I'm going to give this much to the church. All you have to do. Uh -huh. yeah. Truth is the best. Well, the representative is all of it. Exactly. Because we just had Barnabas, who was given this name, son of encouragement. He, he was <laughs> Gracious by the congregation. Thank you, you know. for making that connection. That's exactly and so. Right. Now we have Ananias and his wife going, Okay, we want some of that too, but we don't want to give up all the money. I think we, John, I had a discussion about this. We read this together last year, and I said, But if we were when I first read it, I thought, Okay, if we were to sell our house, we give some to church and keep some. But but the point is he lied. Yeah. He lied about it being this is what I He could have sold the property and not given any of it. Yeah. And no right. God's not gonna strike him for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's when he presents because what is the problem? Why would the why would the why would the response to him and the wife from God be so severe? Why That's, is it such a big deal? It affects the church. And how does it affect the church? You've introduced Okay. Sounds like prophecy of unity for sure. Okay. So we're gonna say, what is Satan's plan? Whatever's against God. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in two parts. With unbelievers and then with believers. With unbelievers. His plan is to keep them from believing yes. in Jesus as Savior and the Word of God is truth. It is to keep men from believing. I can spell it really again. With that's unbelievers. What does he do with believers? Because this this event with Ananias and Sapphira is directly addressing this. With believers, keep them from the word. Make them fear. Keep them from the word so they return to sinful behavior. Also to cause this force among the people. This force is corruption. Corruption. I wrote in here, keep them from assembling together and make focus on things rather than the call of the Lord in their lives. Focus on stuff to encourage false doctrine, to interfere with God's will in our lives. You can think about how Satan does that. How does he interfere with God's will in my life? And here's one of the ways he does it. What God wants us to do, what God wants us to think, what God wants us to be, to change the focus in believer's life to self, things, and people. I mean, you really think about what is going on. Why these chapters are so important. Why, why is it so important to even have the book of Acts? What is the book of Acts thus far? We're only in the five chapters here. What have we learned? What is it that is happening? Why is this book written? I don't believe that it's changed this book. Okay. Okay, in chapter one, it gives us kind of the outline of the whole book. The right? Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the oldest parts of the earth. We're going to spread the gospel, right? 
and it fulfills prophecy that Jesus, he ascended, right? He died on Passover, right? He tells them, here comes Pentecost on, on 10 days from now. I'm going to give you this power, the Holy Spirit. That's, and he's going to mm -hmm. give, he's going to continue within us the work that Jesus is doing in front of them, right? They, they are going to have, they're going to become a new creation. And then we see chapter two. We see this incredible picture of the Holy Spirit working within them and how it changes everything. Changes Jerusalem, changes society, all these people. Then we see these other pictures of how they're coming together, how people are getting saved. You get to four and five, and now they're kind of getting ready, they're kind of becoming a big church. But I think I read one, one commentary said maybe 10, 15,000 people might be saved at this point. I'm not really sure, but it's a lot. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of people. And we're still meeting where? In the temple. We're outside the doors of the temple. Probably the same place with that lame man. We're still going to mm -hmm. church there with them. I guarantee you, he's still there dancing around. <laughs> and, and, and so people are, they're walking around it. They're looking and going, what is going on here? This has never been seen before. In history, okay? They are talking about when all of this happened was formed and all that with Ezra and Nehemiah and that kind of intertestamental period. That's when all that stuff happened. There was none of that before the, uh, they were delivered from uh, Babylonian captivity, but none of that stuff is going really on like And so they have all these rules and regulations that, because they didn't have a king. And they were trying to go back to doing what God had called them to do with Moses. So they came up with 613 oral laws, all these traditions. They developed all of this structure to try to manage and rule the people. You have the, uh, the Maccabean period, which is 100 years, where there were some brothers who fought against the Romans and won, and they ruled for 100 years before they were finally taken over. And this was, it was a terrible time in history for Israel. And so they are claiming, the Jewish people are claiming to that synagogue, to the temple, because it is the only thing that identifies them in a specific way that is unlike any other group of people in the world. When you really think about that, God and what he did with them is absolutely amazing. And so now we have people who are saying Jesus is God in the flesh and they're proving it by all these incredible miracles. The biggest miracle is the unification, single-mindedness of these people. That's not something you've got Sadducees and Pharisees <laughs> and priests and Sanhedrin and all these crazy scribes, all these different groups of people who are all leaders in their uh, church, quote-unquote, their belief system, and they're all teaching you different things. Half of them believe in an act of life, the other half don't. Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, there's crazy stuff going on. And so, from internal attacks, the evidence is Ananias. He's the first picture of somebody who is listening to Satan while being in the middle of church, if you will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This reminds me of almost uh, the the unity and everything is like when they were in Eden, in Eden yeah. you know, the beginning. And, you know, Satan comes along and Ananias bites the apple. And, 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 and <laughs> here we are back to the beginning of the story. He's right. repeating it. So right. Right. God, God united everybody, but here comes Satan. Right. It's an amazing, it's an amazing picture. But internally, he's going against unbelievers and believers. And his goal is self, things, and people. He wants to destroy the purpose of God's will in our lives. Yeah. And you were looking at one sentence you said, Edna is, is a picture of the first person 
to listen to Paul and Paul said it. Mm -hmm. to, to be in church and listening to Satan. Mm -hmm. I do not know, and I don't think it's worth even debating it. That's when I was truly saying. I don't know what to say. I read that somewhere it said that Ananias in, in the Sephira could have been the first death since the resurrection. Of believers. Of believers. Yeah. Could have been. Sure. I don't know. Uh, it'd be, it'd, be, it'd be an issue. Every time to research it, I would, but I, I don't. I just, and then, you know, there, there could have been psychic people and just made a bad Absolutely. decision because we do that all the time. Mm -hmm. But why does God judge them this way? When you are in the, you know, in the middle of, of like, oh, it's, not, it's like I remember when I first got saved, I went to church and everything was, and then I had my first little conversation with you. Don't you love God? Exactly. <laughs> What happened? <laughs> there needs to be a recognition that God will not hold us. See, is he God of the Old Testament? How did God judge? He judges absolutely. And so uh, we need to remember that also today. We, we will need to. All right. Outside the church, now we're going to have uh, attacks 12 through 42, right? We got inside and outside, and then we start getting into this wonderful little section here. The high priest rose up, and they were jealous. Yeah. <laughs> they are. Oh, my goodness. So we know that this happened because the high priests were jealous. So you mean. It also says uh, this. This is the Sadducees. This is the the section of high priests of the Sadducees. <laughs> These are the ones who do not believe in an afterlife. They are jealous. Because more people are going to the portico to hear what's going on than are going into the synagogue to hear from God. They arrest the apostles and put them in a public prison. Now, I told you about this little section of the right that I was teaching at the prison. It's pretty funny. So they're, yeah, they are thrown into the public prison. And during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go and stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life, of this life. And when they heard this, they entered the temple at daybreak and began to teach. Now, when the high priest came and those were with them, him, they called together the council, all the senate of the people of Israel, and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came, they did not find him in the prison, so they returned and reported. And they said, we found the prison security locked and the guards standing at the doors. But when we opened them, no one was inside. And they were perplexed, what's going on? And someone comes and says, those guys are standing in the temple and teaching the people. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. So I was teaching this, and I'm in the dorm. So I teach in two dorms and then the two classrooms. Teaching and... Uh, they, every single dorm has its own door to go outside to its own yard. The yards don't mix so and they're completely independent of each other. So I read that, and right when I read that, the back door popped open to outside. <laughs> and the inmate said, It's Kathy. 
the doors are open out of the prison. And I looked and I was like, what? And of course, all the guards come running in because that's a security thing. I was like, and the lieutenant came up and she said, is anybody back there? I said, no. I said, and I read that script. I said, this is how that is. <laughs> and his wife said to me, and she said, oh, she was for fun. I had to lock up the home. Everybody put, lock them all up and count because, you know, the door was yeah. open. Does anybody run out the door? I said, nobody ran out the door, but they were totally. <laughs> That's funny. So when I came back the next week, uh, one of the guards said to me, what were you preaching? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny. So. Acts chapter 5, read it. Read it. Read it. <laughs> so so they're, they're upset. Uh, Jack's on the, on the church's begin, beginning now from the. Jealous leaders, they get uh, arrest the apostles. And then God breaks them out of jail. And they teach at the temple. That is a, an amazing testimony. What did that tell us? I really like to tell us. What does God expect from us? He did. Hmm? He says go, expects us to go. He expects us to go, regardless of what difficulties, yes. right? This is, no, look, this is not for everybody. No, everybody's called to do this. So I'm not trying to say, but if you're not getting yourself arrested and thrown out <laughs> into the street, that is not what that means. But it is something to think about, about what is actually going on here. So, so she said God was a, <clears throat> wasn't quite ready for them to be arrested. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. The rest was part of it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I this plan yeah, is going to be realized. Right. Right. So this is the will of the Lord. I believe that. I, I think that things that happen like that are because God intends them to happen that way. And so we should be afraid of it. And uh -huh. it's going to be for me. You can be against me. Right? If you call me to do something, then I need to do it. Just imagine me that they went to the back to the temple, back to what they were doing and not running away. Right, that's the plan of game. Mm -hmm. That's so what they were starting to do. But the angel tells me to go back, back to the hill. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go again. Right. Right. And and this goes back to what we're talking about here. The the believers to keep Believers, like now it's kind of confusing, to keep believers from the word, from uh, uh, you know, to have discourse, to be have corruption, is to keep believers from doing God's will. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen to me if I do that? Well, I don't know. But why are we afraid? Are we going to have eternal life? Look, I don't want to suffer pain. I don't like that. <laughs> but they can only feel the body more. But they can only feel the And I think God will be merciful to me. He'll take care of me. We've got no process. I'm going to heaven. I know that. Right? Yes. So, then we have the first thought. They go get them. They did not do it by force. Verse 26, when the captain with the officers went and brought them, but not by force, but they were afraid of being stoned by the people. Well, if you have a crowd that big, you need to be respectful of the crowd. Yes. <laughs> but this is not the church oh, that's going to stone them. This oh, is not the, the church stoning people. them. It's the people who are watching this. Right. They brought them before the council and the high priest, saying, don't teach in his name. Mm -hmm. Do not teach in the name his of name. Jesus. Yeah. to bring this man's blood on us. It's like, mm -hmm. you're already guilty. And what did they do? 
Now, what is what is interesting about this is there was not a complaint about what they were teaching. There was a complaint about whose name they were teaching it. Mm -hmm. So what does that tell you? That they're teaching. They they know. They, they know the power of Jesus or the power of the Holy Spirit. They know the word of God, just yeah. like those priests do. Okay? But they're teaching that well from the revelation of Jesus that built that in us, not in the dead works of the flesh. Because you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Is that what they're trying to do? Is that what they're possibly trying to do? No. Because what's the truth? <clears throat> Which is what, as I can say, my mother. They already have the blood That's of Jesus' right. mother. They've already, they're already <laughs> guilty. Mm -hmm. There's nothing. So, see, that's another lie that Satan tries to mm -hmm. make people think is that, you know, religion, it's just a guilt-based religion. You're not a bad person. Right? I'm doing the right thing. I go mm -hmm. to church. I take communion. I do whatever I feel like. Right? right? What does Peter say? Mm -hmm. We must obey God. Amen. Amen. And then here he goes. Yeah, the God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. And they are enraged. Let's talk a little bit about what uh, is being said here by by Peter. To be a witness. What is what is a witness? How is it defined out here? Not the first hand account. Okay. We witnessed it. We saw it all. Okay. What is our witness? What is, what is our witness? What is my witness? Your testimony. Thank you. What is Peter actually doing? That's the promise to him. No one can refute your testimony if you see it. Nobody can refute it. And so it's really interesting because uh, there is this big response from the Jewish leaders. They want to kill him. Mm -hmm. And what do we see in verse 37 through 41? Now, we have this little discussion here. I don't want to skip it, but I'm running out of time. A uh, uh, Pharisee, Gamaliel, the teacher of the law, however you say his name. Mm -hmm. Who? I think it's Gamaliel. Thank you. No. I'll go with it. <laughs> um, gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. He says, get them out. And he says, man, you better take care. Yeah. You better think about what you're going to do. <clears throat> and he starts listing up these people, Theodos, and, and 400 joined him, and he was killed. And then Judas, the Galilean, rose up and blew away some of the people. He perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from this man and let them alone. For if this plan or this undertaking is of man, it will fail. If it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow it. You might even be found opposing God to the church's advice. Now, that is some of the best uh, 
God is in this. <clears throat> no one can stop it. No one can thwart God. If God is not it will fail. You know what really stands out to me, even as I go through this and I think about it? This is such a good picture of the behavior of how church leadership should be. We can't let just anything walk in the door, right? And we set every test, you got to make sure you know who that person is, stuff like that. But I think sometimes uh, a hands-off, a little bit of a hands-off, without you don't want to expose your body to anything. But if it's not going to if it's not going to happen, that's going to shut it down. And we just have to trust that the Lord is going to do that. Now, when we did Revelation, remember we had seven churches. Some of these churches allowed people in there to do some pretty crazy stuff, right? Mm-hmm. There was all kinds of Pergamum and Thyatira. They had the woman Jezebel to the chain. And they were, you know, doing sacrificing to idols and all kinds of crazy stuff like that. Uh, in that setting, what was the problem? Two churches were good, right? Uh, Philadelphia and Smyrna, right? Smyrna, this is like looking at the church of Smyrna, a church under attack, right? A lot of poverty, a lot of suffering, but they were people who were following God's will, putting down themselves, not really about them, not really about people. Uh, the other churches, the other five churches, right, they had some kind of problem, they had some kind of condemnation against them. And so, whether or not, I think there were probably saved people in all those churches, but not a majority. Just, you know what I'm trying to say? Mm-hmm. So, Sometimes we've got to ask ourselves, uh, are we, what is our attitude about things that we see? And are we asking the right questions? Are we, are we thinking about this from that perspective? Like, is God, if God is in this, it will be fruitful. It will, it will bring a blessing. If he is not in it, you're going to start seeing evidence. What are some of the evidences that we would see? What are some things that would tell us that this is not a real of God? There's a thing about that. And the, so whatever it is does not cost. Or the focus is not on God. God. It's it right. saying so things. Well, you know, Pastor, I had this conversation the other day. Our church is growing again. But he's basically said, I, I'm I want people to come to know God. I'm not about numbers. Right. And um, that's a very important thing. If you're yeah. just in this to grow the church, that's not about God. Yeah. It's very important to, to think about because what, we're, what we are studying, if we just were studying how a church forms, which you can do a whole separate study, mm-hmm. just on that in these chapters. Uh, the, the real focus, and that's one of the reasons why I think the Ananias and Sapphira are so important because uh, God needed to protect the church, and uh, because this is the foundation. What kind of a foundation is this church going to have if they allow things like that to happen? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that, that's a problem. You don't want anybody to die, or you sure don't want to be associated with something like that, but at the same time, there's going to be kind of, it gets obvious over time. What is our responsibility? If we see something going on, um, what, what is our responsibility as a church? What should we do? Okay. Okay. Pray about it first. Pray about it. Who do we speak up to first? 
to the person. The person. Depends on what it is. It depends on what it is. Too, too broad of a question. If it's a teaching ministry that's offline, uh, I would go to my pastor and say, Are you there? Have you been here? Maybe you should visit the class. No. Uh, if it's an individual that's doing something, uh, sometimes it's they're really afraid about going to them. Uh, but the one thing that we should not do is I, I was in a situation with a major disagreement at a church I was on leadership with, and uh, I, my husband and I realized we're not going to agree, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So we just quietly left. We didn't say anything. We didn't make any deal about it. We just separated ourselves out. A few weeks later, a couple of people probably said, What's well, happened? I said, Oh, well, that's just leaving us in these directions. Never once did I say anything about that situation or that. I'm sorry. Oh, she's not bothering me. No, <laughs> Penny, I'm not bothering you. She is. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. I meant to put her up. She's been so fine. She likes the music. She's just fine. She's getting there. 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 I saw a situation. I said, I'm not going to touch this. She kept there was a connection about me at all. You probably did that now. That's all I need. I got over that. This cat's no people that don't like them. Yeah. Like, uh, that's how they are. That's why I want Yeah. Because they're so. I'm very thankful. Okay. All right. Go ahead. All right. So, sorry about that. How did this. Let me just move on. How did the council resolve the situation? What did the council do? They flogged them and ordered them not to speak the name of Jesus. That's right. We are going to be. Yeah, yeah that's good work. <laughs> and what is the response of the disciples? Why they rejoice. <laughs> <with them? laughs> they rejoice because they considered worthy to suffer shame for his name. That would be hard to do. After you've been beat. Yeah. I know that people want to kill me. Maybe I'm beating one. Yeah. Better. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
What have we learned about our testimony in telling others about Jesus? What have we learned about our testimony? Your testimony is the most powerful thing that you have. You know how many times I start a conversation with somebody using a scripture? And I still believe it. Mm -hmm. When you talk to somebody and tell them, I don't know about you guys, but I know when I walked down in front of that church and gave my life to Jesus, my life changed. I'm not the same person I was. That is how You tell them you're going to heaven. I'm always telling somebody I know where I'm going. I'm going to heaven. I mean, that's a testament. Why do we not tell others about Jesus? Fear of the church. That's the big I think that's the big one right there is fear of rejection. Okay. So I were asking. Our confrontation. Especially with children. Why are we afraid of this confrontation, rejection, and what else? Security. security and your ability to be able to share. I'm sure that I can say it because why do we have a problem with that? That's smart. Don't about that. We do not value our testimony. One of the greatest things I think that we should, if you were raised in the church and were in church your whole life, and you just quietly go into that faith, I think in some sense it's a little harder to figure out what is my testimony. But one of the great things that that uh, happens is when we, we ask the Lord, I would say, Lord, show me what I need to say about my testimony. How do I communicate to this person this kind of uh, this kind of life that I have in you that isn't dramatic, right? That isn't a shocking tell-all 60 minutes expose, whatever. You know what I mean? Sometimes I, I think we, we miss the boat because we think that because I didn't have this amazing God experience, uh, that somehow I don't have a good testimony. And so I will pray and say, Lord, show me what is my testimony. Faithfulness, commitment. I know that God loves me. I know I belong. I mean, it's all kinds of things. Think about what is so lacking in society today. What are people afraid of? Not belonging, not being successful. You should think about all things, not yeah. having a relationship, no hope. No hope. I have those things. I didn't grow up on the streets. I was some drug. And by the way, let me just do a little shameless plug. On December 7th, uh, one of the gals that was in prison is going to be coming and speaking there. I highly advise. That's who she was. Goes to church, did everything right, had no problems, good parents, wasn't abused, ended up in prison. And I mean, she, she's got an incredible story. Is that a Saturday? It's a Saturday. Mm -hmm. It's like three hours. It's going to be like, I think, from 10 to 1. But I'll get the detailed information. I'll, I'll get my pastor's back to the picture. It's an amazing picture. So, what is the thing that is essential? Is trust essential in our talking to people about Jesus? Is trust essential? Trust in who? The Holy Spirit? Yeah. 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 So, what right. are you trusting in? Right. Okay. And so, if we are trusting in Him, what can we be guaranteed? We'll put out the words. We'll make it happen. Even if you're rejected, yeah. you will. It isn't even about being rejected. I think that's the problem. Yeah. We get so worried about being rejected, but that's not, God didn't say, go out and give a testimony and you don't be rejected. Yeah, no. Was, how about Peter? Because the you're, not, you're not, you're not citing that person. You're just, I can't say anything about it. just planting a seed. Yeah. Planting a seed or watering or whatever. What was the testimony going on in Jerusalem? 
They saw the way people walked. Mm -hmm. They saw the way people took care of each other. Uh, took care of each other. They saw that all of these pictures, the healings, and all this stuff, they saw how God protected Ananias and Sapphira being taken out because God protected that church. Mm -hmm. Right? You see, that's a comparison to what the priests were doing. Look at the unfairness of what these priests did because they were jealous. Mm -hmm. You think these were the only guys that were disciplined by these priests? No. <laughs> if I did <get> wrong, I'm... <laughs> anybody about Jesus. That's why it's so important that we really think about uh, how we present ourselves and our faith to other people. How do we present that? And what do people see when they see us? Uh, I mean, if you have a beefy church lady, more power to you. Nothing wrong with that. Problem is, is we try to make all this stuff super sophisticated, and it isn't. It is not hard. This is our mind about it. Because we fall and pray to uh, some of the things that Satan lies to us. It's what our Sunday school is. Mind. Yeah, battle in the mind for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, our, our body, you know, it's not like, the, you know, I always tell people, it's not like my hand works independently of my body. Only octopuses have that. You know that octopuses, <laughs> each one of their tentacles has a little mini brain in it, <laughs> and it functions independently of the big brain in the, in the head. You're kidding. Yes. And they're aliens. <laughs> that's why, that's why there is, there is, there is, people believe that they're aliens. I know people actually really believe that. No, uh, God, each, God each has a, an amazing imagination. So, yeah, yeah, they're beautiful. Us, my hand and my mouth <laughs> do not work independently of each other. But that sometimes work independently of my brain. Yeah. <laughs> if you're working Smart. independently of our brain, why is that? Because we've disengaged our work. <laughs> well, I have a small example of that. So I was talking to a young woman years ago, and the conversation led me to share the gospel with her. And the whole time we were talking, I'm thinking, this is, I'm doing the most botched of the job. And I'm trying to explain their history. And at the end, she was looking at me. And I said to you, do you think this is anything you want? Uh-huh. Yeah. And I thought oh, only God could do that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, she heard. I sometimes think, you know, people like to hear the mountaintop experiences, mm -hmm. but they can relate more to the quiet and dwelling of the Holy Spirit in your everyday walk. If they see us happy. I think that's one, just being happy with God. I mean, because you see so many people that are not happy. So what do we do about where we're at politically right now? Oh. What do we do about as believers for where we're at politically right now? Oh. Sure. Right. Well, do our part. <laughs> that is. Voting. Right. voting for sure. And praying. And praying. And knowing that God's will will be done. That's because what I think. Really, and our, our our trust in God does not, not matter if he's on who's present. Not so it on matters if he's on the front. Yeah. I heard that this weekend. I've watched it many times. There's a, my son found it, and so John and I both got it. It's called Unfiltered Gospel. And then have several preachers and pastors there. You know. And he got up on the a young man. And he got up and he just said, he goes, I mean, he, he gave a dissertation about Philip and about what we're looking at there. And it doesn't feel like, he said, I have many opinions. He said, but I'm a preacher of the gospel. So I preach in the Bible. And he told me what he felt. There's like the Democratic platform and what we're looking at. He said, what we're looking at, we're looking at two broken people. Both these people are broken, but you have to put the rest of the Well, we're out broken. Yeah. Well, yeah, okay. exactly. It's point. You know, it's, it's it's like, I've heard that there's millions of Christians that aren't voting because they don't like 
either one of them. My sister. That's a shame. That's yeah. a shame because you got to choose which ones. My sister is a Christian. Yeah. Who does and does not like Trump and made the comment to me that it's too bad that guy wasn't better shot. It wasn't yeah. too, too bad what? He wasn't, wasn't a better shot. shot. Oh, that sure one really put me like I immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, my opinion, sister. But yeah, she uh, knows that she should. That's not. It's it's not about killing that man. It's a horrible, horrible. Yeah. Picture of our country. Right. Yes. I, I just think. Um, and all the name calling. Yeah. My citizenship is not here. That's right. I've got an eternal. Oh. But as as Jeremiah says. In the land, Jeremiah 29, he starts at verse 4. He always says, for 11, but, you know, in the land where you're sojourning, build houses, get married, have children, pray for the government. We are to, we are to be the light wherever we are and, and do the best we can yeah. with what God has placed before us. Grow where you're planted. Grow where you're planted. And I'm about early. And that we have to but whatever happens in the outcome, I get, and I start, you know, I get anxious. I start getting worried and anxious about it. You know, like, okay, you know, like, uh, yeah, take a breath, take a breath, it's gonna be okay. We are all subject to that because we, I lose focus and put my focus on earthly things rather than spiritual things. So one thing that I do know is that what leads people to fight is trial and tragedy. Mm -hmm. So if we can understand that, we can be ready no matter what. Okay. Thank you guys. Good class. So Father, I just thank you so much for this day and for this study. And I ask you, Lord, to just help us to continue to press on and press into your work. And Lord, we are so excited to see what else you have for us in this study. And I just praise you and thank you for all that you do. Pray for those who are unable to be here for all kinds of reasons. And Lord, we just know that you are the author and finisher of our faith. We just need to fill ourselves in your hands and let you be the one who directs our lives. I praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.